Hi, this is Steve, V6WZ. Hey, come with me on a little journey. I'm going to show you how I found, located, tracked down the noise coming from this beautiful church cross uh, on a church very close to my remote QTH. Here's an image of the Flex waterfall showing the noise, uh, showing in uh, green. This is the 160 meter band. A couple uh, prominent frequencies where the, the noise is loudest. You'll notice that there's a few places here where the noise is diminished. Well, that's because if you'll notice on the inset to the left here, I used my beverages uh, arrays to try and isolate the location of the noise. Uh, where it's most loud was on my European beverage pair. Again, on the inset, you'll see they're pointing to the northeast. You notice if I just isolated the European beverage 2 wire, that's this one, the noise was diminished. It was still there, but it was less. And of course, if we pointed to uh, Japan, it was uh, pretty much completely gone. Well, again, looking at the inset, you can see this is the Eagle Hill Church located here. It's a little blue building. Well, it all made sense that the uh, most likely source was the uh, church. One other clue about the, uh, the noise was that it was temporal. That is to say, it went on every evening at sunset and uh, it went off every uh, morning at sunrise. So obviously it was on a uh, timer. So I made the uh, trip up to the church uh, before sunrise. And of course, the noise was roaring on the AM radio and the church uh, uh, cross was illuminated. Uh, as soon as the sun came up sufficiently to trigger the photocell, the, uh, the noise stopped. So I knew I had isolated it to be indeed the LED uh, cross. Uh, by the way, on this photo at the steeple, just under the crest of the, uh, the gable here, you'll notice there's a photo cell and it's right there. So uh, to do my testing, all I did was reach out of the window here and put some black tape over the photo cell and I could uh, trigger the light to, uh, to illuminate to do my testing. Uh, my initial suspicion was that this had something to do with the uh, pulse modulation controllers on the LED lights themselves. So I ended up uh, contacting the church, I climbed up on the roof and uh, introduced and added a number of ferrite uh, cores, a clamp on type 31 cores on the uh, 12 volt line going to the uh, cross itself. This did nothing, well actually it did, it actually did, it moved, <laughs> it mostly just moved the noise uh, around. In fact at one point it made it significantly worse uh, on, on 160 meters. Um, so this made me wonder if indeed it was on the 12 volt line. The main reason I was looking on the 12 volt side was, you know, these, this, this noise is kind of like, you know, distributed in these bands. And, uh, but, you know, then I decided to listen to the noise on AM. I mean, I highly recommend that that be done rather than listening on uh, upper sideband or CW. You know, and when I listened to that sound again, um, you know, it kind of really had that sound more like uh, a 60 hertz bass. Uh, frequency. So, of course, one of the best tricks you can ever do, and I do this all the time when trying to locate uh, and isolate power line arcing as being the main culprit. This is an actual uh, spectrum display out of that very recording you just heard, and uh, using Audacity. I just copy the thing and, and put it into Audacity and then do a spectrum display, which you can see here. And of course, uh, typical, classic. Uh, 60 hertz bass noise with the harmonics. Of course, the 120 hertz peak uh, being the prominent one, which of course is the is an arcing or a switch on both the P, the uh, positive and negative swing of the 60 hertz. And of course, then you have all of the, the harmonics. You got 120, 240, 360, 480, and so on and so forth, which is a, a classic fingerprint for this being on the uh, power line side uh, of the uh, power supply. So armed with this, I, I decided that uh, I needed to go out and isolate the uh, power supply, which I did do. Uh, I pl unplugged the supply and uh, took my AM radio out there and it was very clear that the noise was coming uh, on the AC side of the power supply. Let's go for a drive. I'll show you what I did. I switched out that, uh, that switch mode power supply, the driver, the LED driver for a new one, and uh, we definitely solved the problem. Let's go on an adventure here. Here we are, the church. The uh, LED light at the cross. I've just put a piece of tape over the uh, solar cell to activate it. It's time delayed. It should take about, it's about two minutes for it to activate. I have the car radio set right now on 1700 kilohertz on the AM band. And there the lights went on. You can see the lights. They've just 
illuminated and that is the sound from that power supply. Let's go up and have a look at it. Yeah, go into the church here. Fairly old building, actually a very old building. Rickety old stairs here to get up into the attic. It's really dark in here. It's a very non-code set of stairs. So here we are up in this loft or attic. And uh, this is the supply that we are currently have connected. Today's plan is to switch this out for a different supply. It's a Hanley LED switch mode supply. It's actually a dual supply. Uh, there's a string of string of LEDs on both sides of the cross, but I'm just going to combine those two and then um, uh, replace it with this supply, which is um, which is a uh, I'll make of it. What is it? A meanwhile supply, and it's a single output supply, but it's fully uh, eight amps, which is what this is. You know, a two to a uh, four amp supply. Anyway, let's switch it out, see what happens. Just to confirm, indeed, that it is the supply. I've got a little ICOM radio here, and uh, I'm gonna unplug the supply to the lights, and we have no more noise. So, obviously, it's this supply or the LEDs. Let's find out. Well, all right. The meanwhile supply is perfectly radio quiet. I also uh, have checked my SDR. I also made a recording of the SDR while I was doing, on the SDR when I was doing it. I'll maybe include that in the video just to show you what was happening as I was uh, switching this out. So while I was doing those uh, tests out at the church, I had the Perseus radio, which is shown here, a recording. Uh, and this is, uh, you know, kind of spanning from uh, into the BCB band medium wave right up to 160 meters on the right here. And uh, you'll see when the, uh, there it is, there the supply just went off right now. And you can see the noise completely uh, stopped. And it remained equally silent uh, with the uh, meanwhile supply and remains uh, quiet. Here's that dirty Hanley supply on the uh, bench. You know, I, I uh, pried this lid off or the back off to see if I could, uh, you know, inspect this thing. But, you know, it's the whole thing is potted in this epoxy, so I can't really get in and, and inspect anything. You know, I thought maybe there was some faulty uh, filtering components on the output, but, well, there's no way for me to, uh, to, uh, to look for that. Uh, you know, I'm left to think that, you know, it's just a poor design. And even though they say, you know, it meets uh, all noise specification parameters, uh, you know, there's no information quoted and, and obviously it's uh, it's dirty. I, I gotta say that's one thing that I liked about the Meanwell supply. If you go to their website uh, on their, all their supplies they actually quote the noise output figures and actually have plots of the noise uh, versus frequency for all of their supplies which you know I seem I think seems to indicate they've given a real good effort toward uh, uh, you know keeping the noise uh, abated from these uh, LED drivers. Anyway hopefully that's helpful for anyone that's uh, ever in encounter one of these things. You know, these LED uh, lights are everywhere now. All of the signs that we see on the streets are usually now uh, LED illuminated. So, you know, if you've ever, uh, if you ever have a problem, then, you know, it could be the LED driver on these things. 73, this is Steve, V6WZ.